Good afternoon, everybody. Pigskin Pete here. Draft day coming up tomorrow. And by the way, happy Wednesday to everybody. Uh, draft day coming up tomorrow. Um, every video maker, every pundit on TV um, is all putting out mock drafts. And I've watched all of them, and they're all great. The problem with the mock drafts is everybody has a, a different mock draft. Some have Baker going number one to the Browns. Some have Barkley going number one to the Browns. Some have Allen going number one to the Browns. Some have Rosen going number one to the Browns. And the list goes on and on. It's sort of like a college football bracket, um, or a college basketball bracket, rather, with the tournament. As soon as uh, you get one of those first you know, few games wrong, then it screws up the rest of your draft, screws up the rest of your bracket. So instead of doing a mock draft, I'm just going to talk about the most compelling uh, storylines of the draft as far as the quarterbacks go. Just give you my opinion on uh, the quarterbacks, their personalities, their play, and where I think they would fit best with which teams. So let's get right into it. The crotch grabber, Baker Mayfield. I was hard on Baker Mayfield while I was hard on Oklahoma uh, as a whole. And of course, with his, you know, on the field and off the field antics, uh, I was really hard on Baker Mayfield throughout college. And that was more just trash talking the Big 12 and Oklahoma as a whole. But the reality is the guy is an NFL talent. Uh, he has all the intangibles, uh, the will to win, uh, you know, the, the fire, the spirit, whatever you want to call it. He's extremely accurate with the football. Um, yeah, he played in a spread system and played against bad defenses in the Big 12. But they, Oklahoma ran a pretty sophisticated type of spread system. Uh, and not to mention, this is something that, that bugs me. Because I, I've been saying for years now, uh, arguing with people about um, the, the offensive systems in the NFL. And I don't know why people aren't coming to this realization. Because I finally heard somebody say it who knows something, Chris Carter uh, on um, Fox Sports, say that the game is evolving in the NFL. The college systems, spread systems, whatever you want to call them, um, are ahead of the times. More and more NFL teams are going to a spread system or some version of it. And you're seeing it more and more every year. Some of these uh, younger quarterbacks are playing more and more like a college-type system in the NFL because it's harder to defend. Imagine, so the whole point of the spread system is to spread it out um, and make it harder for the defense to, uh, you know, it's not condensed. It's not, an, it's not in a vacuum. So why wouldn't you want to do that with the best players on earth in the NFL? It only makes sense. That's why you're seeing scoring go up along with the rule changes. But quarterbacks now, you do not have to be a behind-the-center pocket passer, uh, you know, like the old days, to be a Hall of Famer. I mean, as long as you can stay healthy in the spread system, uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of advantages to it. So I don't buy into the thing that if you played in a spread system in college, then you're not going to, uh, you're going to have a hard time translating to the NFL. I just don't believe that. Some of those spread systems are very complicated as far as the schemes of the defense and, you know, where, you know, the coverages and everything. So I'm not buying it. If, if you are, can run a spread system at a high level in a passing offense in college, then you can uh, learn the NFL system. Um, and, and they'll probably implement some plays um, to fit your skill set if they're a good, you know, offensive coordinator or head coach or both. So Baker Mayfield, I do believe, will be a good quarterback. The height thing does not bother me. Uh, he's two inches taller than Russell Wilson and one inch taller than Drew Brees. So you could say, oh, well, he, yeah, he, there's no way he's 6'1". Well, the measuring tape says he's 6'1". Uh, so I mean, that's like saying that the, you know, uh, that the, the, the moon doesn't revolve around the earth. Uh, yeah, it does. Uh, and he's six one, which is short for a quarterback, but it's not like he's a midget. Okay. Uh, so it, the whole thing with his height is it, it, ridiculous. And plus these college players are just as tall as NFL players. I mean, you got college players that are six, seven, six, eight. 6'5", six, 6'4", six, all across the board on the whole field. And so he played, he didn't have any problem with height playing in college. You're not going to have any problem playing with height in the NFL. You have to more, worry more about strength and speed in the NFL than you do height uh, at the quarterback position anyway. So I think that Baker Mayfield would be a great fit for Cleveland. The reason I think he'd be a great fit for Cleveland uh, or New York uh, Jets 
but I think he would be a great fit for Cleveland because it's sort of the underdog role, underdog team. Nobody expects to do well. That's been his MO since he came out of high school, going through college, being a walk-on at Oklahoma. He fits the narrative, and he would be a great guy uh, to put that city and team on his back because he's an emotional player and uh, get things going there. So I like Baker Mayfield, and I think he would fit best with either the Browns or the Jets. The spoiled brat, Josh Rosen. I've been very public about my opinions about Josh Rosen, and a lot of people share my thoughts about Josh Rosen. Do I think he's a great talent? I absolutely do. Um, there's something about him that just gives me pause. Uh, he might be the best overall physical talent, mechanics, whatever, in this draft. Uh, but I think that what you're going to see, unless he just goes to, happens to land in the very right spot where they um, are accommodating to him, uh, I think you're going to see him butt heads with coaching staff. I don't know about players. He might get along with the players. He might be a player's player for all I know. I don't know. I can't speak on that. But he did, he's just made some comments. He made a comment uh, one time about how, you know, he, he will push back against the coach if he doesn't think, feel like the, the coach is, is all in as he is. Um, basically what he's saying is if the coach doesn't agree with me, uh, I'm going to push back. Well, listen, you're not in college anymore, son. Uh, these NFL coaches are the, one of the 32 best football coaches in the world. And to pretend like you come out of UCLA with, with a, a mediocre uh, a record there and career there and, and say that, you know, you're going to push back against, you know, these guys that have been in the business since before you were born coaching football is ridiculous. And I don't know if that's uh, an immaturity thing or if he really believes that, but the bottom line is I just I, – I wouldn't risk my first overall pick if I had a high pick on a guy like Josh Rosen. He may end up going on to be a Hall of Fame quarterback and win multiple Super Bowls, and everybody will be like, oh, see, all they said, he was an idiot, and they said he wasn't going to make it, and he's great. I'm not saying he's not going to be great. I'm not sold on him. And when it comes to the first top five, top ten picks in the draft, I'm not mortgaging – my future on a guy that I don't trust. So take it for what it's worth. Uh, I think he would probably be a great fit uh, somewhere like Denver, um, maybe even the Patriots, uh, so he could sit behind Tom Brady for a couple years and learn how to be a real pro. But I don't know. I wouldn't take him if I were the Giants. I wouldn't take him if I were the Cleveland. Uh, I wouldn't take him if I were the Jets. We'll see. I'm sure he'll go in the top five, though, because he's that good. The overgrown Boy Scout, Sam Darnold. Uh, Sam Darnold, I think, was, is going to be a bust. I know that there's a good chance he's going to go number one overall. Um, and if he's not picked number one overall, he'll probably be picked up by either the Jets or the Giants or somebody up in that top five uh, who needs a quarterback. Um, the guy has all the, you know, the measurables, the height, the arm, talent, everything. He, he's a turnover machine. He was at USC. He's a bit of a gunslinger, which is not a bad thing. Um, but there's something about him. I, I just can't put my finger on it with, with him. Uh, he's a nice guy. Uh, seems like a nice, humble guy who, who does love football. And I think put in the right team and the right system and the right situation, he will have a chance to succeed. I, here's the thing. As I think that Baker Mayfield is one of the few quarterbacks who could go to Cleveland and actually succeed there. I'm not sure that Sam Darnold could uh, because I think that he needs a little bit more grooming. Um, he needs to be on a better team is what I'm getting at than the Browns uh, because you know what the Browns do. They, they, they draft a quarterback and they put him, throw him into the wolves and if they don't have a thick skin and if, and if they're, you know, not, uh, if, if they turn the ball over a lot and that sort of thing, then they, that's the end of their career and they're out of there. So I hate to see that happen to Sam Darnold. Um, I think he might be a better fit for the Giants uh, and sit behind Eli for a couple years if the Giants were going to go that route. So that's my feelings on Sam Darnold. I probably have him on, out of my top four quarterbacks fourth on the depth chart, unfortunately. One of only two residents in the state of Wyoming, Josh I've said Allen. over and over again that this is the best quarterback in this draft. Uh, he played for a crappy school, Wyoming, uh, with almost zero talent around him. Uh, but physically, I mean, he's, uh, you know, Carson Wentz 2.0, Cam Newton 2.0, um, big arm, big physical guy. 
Uh, also, a guy like Mayfield, who was an underdog, wasn't even offered a scholarship at a D1 school, went to some you know, community college and then ended up getting offered a, a scholarship to play at Wyoming. Nobody else, was even, nobody else even gave him the, the, a second look. And so uh, he's, unlike Carson Wentz, you know, Carson Wentz didn't play at a Power 5 school. In fact, he played at an FCS school, but he won national championships in the F FCS and was clearly, you know, uh, he could have started at most Power 5 schools. Carson Wentz could have. He's that good. Uh, but Josh Allen played in a bad conference, bad team. Um, but I think that if, he's another guy. You can't throw, you can't draft him high and then just throw him in game one to start and expect him to succeed. He's one of these guys that needs to go to the right place also and learn behind a veteran, sit down for a year or two. Um, you know, Aaron Rodgers sat behind Far for a while, and of course you saw how good that did him. Uh, when whenever Aaron Rodgers came in and, and just lit the league on fire, and he's been uh, one of the top three quarterbacks in the NFL since he uh, came on the scene after Brett Favre retired or got shipped out. So I think that Josh Allen is going to need a year or two. I I think he has the highest ceiling. I think if he goes to the right spot, uh, he has a potential to be great. Uh, him and Baker Mayfield, my two favorite uh, quarterbacks in this draft. Uh, if, if Josh Allen was drafted by the Browns, he would have to sit back and um, sit down for a year. They can't, they can't throw him in there. Same thing with if he went to the Jets. Uh, and, of course, if he went to the Giants, he'd be learning from Eli Manning. That might be a really good spot for him um, if, if the Giants go the quarterback route. So I really like Josh Allen. Uh, I think that if he goes to the right spot, he will potentially be an elite quarterback in the NFL for years to come. Can't wait for tomorrow night. I'm thinking about doing something tomorrow for the uh, draft. I'm not sure yet. I know a lot of other tubers are going to be going live, so I'm not going to, you know, go live. And um, I'll probably be watching one of their streams. But anyway, have a great day. Pigskin Pete. Check